Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dustin, and on this channel we talk about things all the way from tech reviews to vlogging. And if you're into that sort of thing, definitely consider subscribing. This is really just a quick video. Uh, I just wanted to inform a lot of you guys who are subscribed to the channel or who are new to the channel and have subscribed particularly for the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K uh, information. Uh, Blackmagic Designs literally tonight just released a new firmware for their Blackmagic cameras. Uh, this firmware is firmware 6.1. Uh, it's one of the latest firmwares, um, from what I can tell, that addresses a lot of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K uh, battery issues and things of uh, things like that. Um, I did want to read to you guys just exactly what exactly is on the fixes for this firmware and just inform you guys what the changes are and how they can improve uh, your camera overall experience as well. I'm pretty much going to read off the entire list of the Blackmagic firmware update on what exactly the changes were for the Pocket Cinema 4K. There are changes to other cameras, but in my main worry is about the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K, so I'm going to get into that part right now. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and read off the list for you guys and let you guys know what exactly the updates and changes are on this new firmware. Blackmagic has added support for pixel remapping in the camera. They added a 2 to 1 monitoring frame guide, improved, uh, improved media formatting user interface, Improved audio monitoring latency performance, improved autofocus performance, good job. Improved signal to noise ratio performance of camera internal microphone, improved power efficiency for improved battery life. This is probably, in my opinion, one of the most important things about this camera. This is really my only beef with this camera is the battery life. And if you've probably watched a lot of other videos, you'll notice that it's exactly the same beef that a lot of people have with this camera. So I'm curious to see how uh, effective this improved battery life performance is. And uh, I'm curious because these little guys right here, I could probably get 20 to 40 minutes out of it max. Next, they improved the 3.5 millimeter audio input selection interface, uh, improved AV signal sync, AV sync performance. They also fixed an issue where time and date is not updated on camera when connected to the Blackmagic camera setup utility. They fix an issue where the 3.5 millimeter audio input level is 6 dB lower than expected. Fixed an autofocusing issue with Lumix 20 millimeter uh, aperture 1.7 lens. That's pretty good because it's a great lens for this camera. Fixed an issue where some USB-C external SSDs were not detected when connected before camera is powered up. There were a lot of people that were affected by this because there was something going on with these T5 SSDs. Uh, where it just was not recognizing your hard drive uh, you turn your camera on camera works perfectly but it does not see the hard drive in my instance uh, there have been times where it didn't recognize luckily i had a secondary sd card so i could record to that directly uh, but i would highly recommend even with this update to have at all times a secondary option for recording video uh, as far as ssd or cfs cards definitely recommended even though they've come up with this fix um, just because uh, you don't want to lose your data or have an issue where you need some storage space and you don't have it because your SSD is failing. A lot of people are using this external SSD simply because it's more cost effective and it's a lot easier to work with uh, when connecting to your computer and doing, and doing quick backups and edits. A plus to Blackmagic for working on that and getting that resolved. Uh, they fix an issue where some batteries might, might shut off earlier than expected uh, and I think more of that is because they uh, have a small amount left on the battery, but for some reason the camera automatically shuts off. Uh, it could be the indicator, uh, I'm not sure, but the next fix is actually a part of that issue as well. Uh, fix an issue where low battery indicator is not displayed correctly. Um, the reason why that's important is because with my previous batteries, especially uh, any of these aftermarket, well this is not aftermarket, any of these aftermarket batteries, uh, there was issues where the percentages on this was showing like 40%, uh, and then I would drop down to 20%, jump back up to 40%. Uh, sometimes it would just show like a super low number uh, randomly, and then uh, it just was not accurate at all. Uh, it would show 40%, and then all of a sudden your, your camera just shuts off. And there was a point in time where I thought my camera was dead, but really it was because the indicator on these batteries was totally incorrect. Apparently they have worked on that, and the battery life and the way in which the battery shuts off the camera is working differently now so kudos to you Blackmagic for working on that as well. Fix an issue with camera not being detected by host computer when connected to certain USB ports. Uh, I believe this was something that a lot of others have seen on the 
uh, forums and the Facebook pages where their camera just wouldn't connect to their computer. I myself don't really connect my camera to the computer that often. I pretty much edit strictly from my uh, my T5 SSD connected directly and copy over from there. So I never really had that issue because I never really needed to connect it, but it's definitely important to have that fix in there just in case you need to uh, get into your camera or update the firmware ASAP. Well, those are the fixes and updates for today. Uh, I did not go over the specifics of all the firmware updates, specifically because I don't have experience with those issues. Uh, but the ones that did affect me, I did want to share with you guys what I have seen with it and how I have, and how these improvements will really better my camera experience and how I can use this camera in the long run. I know that a lot of the fixes uh, in this firmware update are actually things that people have beef with this camera. So this might actually convince people uh, if they fix it in the firmware update to go over to this camera finally. So we'll see what happens. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching and continue to like and subscribe on the channel. Uh, I hope this is informative. And uh, if you guys have any questions or if you guys have anything uh, that you've come into issue with with this camera uh, that hasn't been addressed with the firmware updates, and if you have had issues that have been addressed with this, definitely let me know in the comments below. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.